For today's cruise news, we have a heartbreaking update to a story involving a cruise passenger with dementia that went missing in one of the most popular cruise ports in all of the Caribbean. This story is going to be a big reminder to all of you that even the most honest and simple mistakes can end up in tragedy. Also, we have an update slash reminder from the Fun Ships Carnival Cruise Line. They are reminding guests to be respectful of their ships and their crew on board. After it appears that a lot of guests are taking advantage of a hot ticket item, in a way that it wasn't initially intended. However, I do believe Carnival is partly to blame for this. I will explain the details in today's video. So we have a very sad and disappointing update to a story that I've been keeping tabs on for the better part of two weeks. I've already made two other videos. However, this is the third and will most likely be the last as it appears that this outcome is going to be very tragic when it comes to this story. It involves a 66 year old man by the name of Bradley Solomon III. About two weeks ago, he, his wife Mimi and his daughter were sailing on a cruise on board Royal Caribbean's Icon of the Seas. They had a stop or call over in Cozumel, Mexico. Upon them disembarking or getting off of the cruise ship, prior to them exploring the island and taking excursions, they decided to stop at the restroom. And when Mimi and his daughter got out, they noticed that Bradley was nowhere to be found. At that point, they would freak out because he was recently diagnosed with frontal temporal dementia, which is not like your typical dementia where you have memory loss. Instead, this condition of dementia causes issues such as behavioral changes. This man could be very impulsive due to his condition. It could also cause a potential loss of motor functions when it comes to things like walking. Whenever it was discovered that Bradley, or as they called him Brad, was nowhere to be found, the first thing they did was check the restroom. From there, they got authorities involved and they took a cart and went around the entire island, at least in the city area at the time, looking for Brad and he was still nowhere to be found. The search would then go on for about two weeks. You had local authorities over in Cozumel, Mexico. You had U.S. authorities getting involved and everybody in between. During the two-week process, they were putting up signs and they were also posting online as much as possible in hopes that somebody would see any signs of Bradley then that he would be of course safe and sound. About one week ago the search grew and expanded from the parameters of just the city and tourist areas to the forest areas. If you've ever been to Cosmo, Mexico, yes in the grand scheme of things it's a relatively small island. If you've got a car or even a scooter you can get around the entire island in about an hour and a half or less. However even though there is a city, even though there's roads, even though there's beaches, there is a a lot of forest area, a lot of trees, so there was the assumption that maybe Bradley had wandered off into the forest, or maybe and hopefully there is a community over there that found Bradley and was able to keep him safe until he was discovered. So now, as of the last 24 to 48 hours, while the search has not been called off, it has now changed from finding Bradley and hoping he is found safe and sound to unfortunately being called a body recovery. As hard and tragic as this is to imagine, the family has accepted that the possibility of Bradley being alive, since it has been two long weeks that they've been searching for him over in Cozumel, the idea of him still possibly being alive there is a chance that he still could be. However, there is a chance that now he could not be. At one point, you did have the daughter. She was very, I don't want to say paranoid, but she was also naturally just worried about everything that was going on. She was stating that if they don't stop posting, if the U.S. doesn't continue to get involved, they believe that people are going to forget all about him. The family was also upset that this is going on, this search and rescue effort, and it seems like people are kind of just living their lives and continuing the move. I did tell you guys last time that it is unfortunate. I'm sure most of us if not all of us have lost a loved one at some point and when you see people that aren't in your circle that are still going to work and traveling and having fun and laughing and drinking I can understand how it could affect you in a way because you want everybody to stop you want the world to stop and focus on this thing that's going on but as I've said before the world does keep turning honestly considering the family said that Bradley had recently been diagnosed with dementia I'm sure there are some parameters and situational awareness that they just weren't really thinking about when it came to something as little as going to the bathroom. You've been around somebody with dementia and in one instance they can seem perfectly fine, normal, and next thing you know they forget your name and everything in between. In this particular case, frontal temporal dementia, they can have a quick change in behavior in the fraction of a second. So this is something that was an honest mistake and can happen to potentially anyone. But let this be a reminder to all of you out there
there, if you are traveling with children, if you are traveling with somebody that's elderly, that has medical conditions, and I'm not saying just because somebody is up in age. I know there was a situation like two weeks ago, people were mad because I said there was an 80-year-old woman that went over to Africa. She had a stroke, got put in a hospital, left by the cruise ship. And if it hadn't been for two other passengers that got left behind, who knows what could have happened to this woman? She could have been lost in this situation. I'm not saying somebody that is up in age shouldn't be able to travel. I want to make that very clear. That's something that kind of got lost in the context of things. But getting back to the topic at hand, when it comes to a situation like this, like I said, it can happen to anyone. It's an honest mistake, but it just unfortunately ended in tragedy. Moral of the story, for the love of God, people, just look out for your people when you are traveling. I hate to put it this way, but this is a fact. A lot of people have what I like to call cruise brain, and I'm not talking about in this case in particular, but you got a lot of people out there that think that because they cruise and the cruise is considered one of the safest forms of travel, they forget about the other elements of life. I do a lot of traveling outside of cruising. I've seen things when it comes to people scouting for trafficking. I've seen violent things happen literally right in front of me. This is a crazy world that we live in. And aside from all of the medical conditions that somebody may be having, there are so many elements out there that you have to be aware of if you are going to travel. Just the food for thought. Now, sailing into our next story, we got to talk about carnival cruise line the fun ships home of the very important fun people some of which think that they are so important that they don't have to abide by the rules regulations and parameters of the packages in which they decide to purchase and indulge in i am talking about the faster to the fun package it has become an issue and i do have to be honest while i don't think this is carnival's fault when it comes to this conundrum there are changes that i do believe and wish that they could make when it comes to this situation as a whole so you do have the ambassador for carnival cruise line mr john held himself he's been very vocal about a situation when it comes to faster to the fun if you don't know what faster to the fun is it is a package you can purchase and indulge in for about 70 dollars or if you are a high ranking status loyalty member with carnival cruise line or a very important fun person you get it for free it allows you to get early embarkation priority when it comes to the lines for customer service priority when it comes to the lines to go to the tender bolts and all that jazz you get the idea in a nutshell it gives you somewhat of a premium type service service if you will the problem is you have passengers that have been sailing on carnival ships that have been taking advantage of this package in a way that it wasn't naturally intended by that i mean whenever you board a carnival cruise ship typically when you get on board and this will happen on a lot of cruise ships because you have room stewards that are working very hard by the way to get the rooms clean in order to give all of you the best experience so you have nice clean and shiny rooms to go into for your vacation experience it can take a little while meaning the rooms may not be ready so the corridor or the doors rather to get inside of let's say the halls in order to enter the cabins are usually closed off except except if you purchase that faster to the fun package or have it by way of your loyalty program even when the rooms are not ready for you to go in yet if you have the faster to the fun package you are allowed to at least go into the room and drop off your bag so you're not carrying your book bag or your carry-on bag all over the ship while you're trying to do some exploring before the ship has its sail away party and sails off into the sunset for you to enjoy your cruise the problem that's been coming up is that there are people that go into to that room not to drop their bag off they do that of course however they are weary and possibly a little smelly or dirty from their travels and they decide that they either want to take a nap because they are tired or because they feel a little filthy due to them going to the terminal and their travels that they decide they want to take a shower and this has come to a clash between the passengers and the crew members aka the room stewards that are trying to clean the rooms and they can no longer do so because passengers are deciding instead of dropping their bags off and going they want to stay in the room now indefinitely now that the general idea is out of the way, let's be a little realistic here. As many of you know, I cruise quite a bit. Been on many a carnival cruise ship. New ships, old ships, ships to catch on fire twice. And well, I've been on Virgin, I've been on Royal Caribbean, I've been MSC. All the cruise lines, at least the main ones under the sun, or at least above the seven seas. And one thing I have to say when it comes to Carnival is that yes, typically on some cruise ships, you'll get on board. I've been on Royal Caribbean once where the rooms weren't ready and you couldn't drop your stuff off either unless you were, again, a high ranking status member. It is understandable. When it comes to this faster to the fun package, it is definitely a nice perk considering everything that you're getting. However, you are naturally going to have some people that are going to take advantage. And when it comes to Carnival, I do believe that there is some 
some rearranging, a system change, if you will, that needs to be at least studied and conducted for Carnival Cruise Line because there have been times that it's not just the people that are getting on board early. There have been times that it has essentially been all aboard. I'm talking about 4 or 5 p.m. when it's time for the sail away party and the ship to start its actual cruise where the rooms still are not ready. I don't know about any of you, but I've been on a lot of ships where, at least Carnival Cruise ships, where this has definitely been an issue. I don't know if they need to send a mole to Royal Caribbean or MSC, you name it, but they got to figure out a better way to get those rooms ready because naturally, if there are a lot of people that are vets when it comes to Carnival and they know how it all goes down, they know they're not going to have access to their room for the next five to six hours potentially, they're going to get to a point where they're going to say, hey, you know what? I've been able to get into my room, drop off my bag. Let me go ahead and take a quick shower. They're going to get ready to re-clean all of it anyway. I'm going to take a quick nappy poo or what have you. I'm not saying it's right, but as you could imagine, the people paying that $70 or if they're able to get access to their room knowing they can't get access to it again for another couple hours, they are indeed going to take advantage. To be very clear, I'm not saying that what the passengers are doing is right. I'm not saying that Carnival is technically doing anything wrong, but there has to be a way for them to expedite that service. We do know the crew are working extremely hard. I'm not blaming them, but there could be potentially, potentially a better system in place. That way they can expedite that cleaning process, and that way everybody who is paying for that extra ticket item to be able to drop their bags off or what have you could actually indulge in it, knowing that maybe in an hour or so, before all the festivities start and they really start to indulge in that drinking package they can clean up change do what they got to do so they can have the best vacation possible but that's what i got for today's video guys of course let me know your thoughts in the comment section below hit that like button on your way out and oh i do got to remind all of you i am going to start posting again on my third channel the travel news channel there's so much going on with the flights you guys know the whole boeing situation i gotta start covering all that stuff make sure you check that out a video coming out tonight at approximately 9 p.m eastern time or earlier if you haven't subscribed to that I will link it in the description box below and in the comment section. And uh, yeah, go on over there. Appreciate you guys. Love all of you. And I'll see all of you later. Take it easy.